In this video, I'm going to show you how you can travel the world for free or almost free just using credit cards. It may sound too good to be true, but I've been doing this for years and saved thousands of dollars in the process. I was able to stay at five star hotels and fly first class for basically free. So whether you're looking to take a vacation or just want to explore your own backyard, stick around and let me teach you how it's done. Now, don't worry, you don't have to be a rocket science to make this happen. In fact, it is as easy as swapping your credit card for everyday purchases and watching those rewards pile up. With a few simple strategies, you can quickly rack enough points to book your next getaway without breaking the bank. With a little know-how and some insider tips, you'll be living the high life in no time. So get ready to take your travels to the next level and discover the incredible power of credit card rewards. So before we start talking about travel hacking, to play this game, you're gonna have to be able to meet some requirements. First, you need to have a good to excellent credit score. We're talking about 680 and above. Next is to be able to meet minimum spends. This is what gets you bonuses and welcome offers. And third, be able to pay off your credit card debts or balances in full to avoid interest. So with that out of the way, what is travel hacking in a nutshell? Here's the deal. When you sign up for a new credit card, they will often entice you with a juicy welcome offer. It may be something like earn 60,000 points after spending $4,000 in three months. Now, don't get too intimidated by that spending requirement. We're talking about all of your regular spending like groceries, gas, online shopping, and even rent. So it's a no brainer. Once you've hit that spending threshold, those 60,000 points are like a magical key that can unlock amazing travel opportunities. Depending on the card, those points can be worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars in reward travel. In the best part, you can do it all over again with the same credit card and different credit cards and go on even more adventures. Now let's talk about how can you earn credit card points and miles. The way that you're able to travel for free is by using points and miles. Each program will have its own name. For instance, Chase Points are called Chase Ultimate Reward Points and American Express is called Membership Reward Points. So the quickest way to earn a lot of points is by opening up new credit cards and getting that welcome bonus. Now, I won't lie, it can be a little bit overwhelming to sort through all of the different offers out there. But don't worry, there are plenty of resources that will help you navigate the rewards landscape. Creditcardratings.com and the Points Guy are great resources to find out which credit cards currently have the highest sign up bonuses. If you guys do want to know what are my top picks, I do have a link down in the description that you guys can check out. When it comes down to finding the best credit cards, this is the criteria that I'm usually looking for. So first off is the intro offer. The higher the better. You typically would want to find historically high offers. And how you would find this is just by doing a simple Google search. Next is the minimum spend required. This is the amount of money that you have to spend over how many months to qualify for that bonus. Lastly, I would like to think about the annual fee. Normally, the smaller it is, the better the deal. Now, the valuation of points and miles will vary from each program, but a general rule of thumb is that one point or one mile is probably gonna be worth at least one cent. Hotel points are usually worth less, but you have to find valuations on different sites. The points guy, they have their own valuations, so I think that is a great starting point. So for instance, if a credit card is offering you 60,000 bonus points, once you hit a minimum spend, this is roughly translates to $600. Now, let me give you a real life example. I think one of the best beginner travel credit cards is a Chase Sapphire Preferred card. So currently with this card, you can earn 60,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points whenever you spend $4,000 within the first three months. This card also has an annual fee of $95. I must say that I am a Chase enthusiast and this is probably one of the best type of points that I like to accumulate because they're just so darn easy to use and they have plenty of travel partners. Now, with this credit card, if you were to book flights through the Chase Travel Portal, your points can be worth an extra 25%, meaning that that $600 can be worth closer to $750. Now, to even squeeze out more value from those points is by transferring to travel partners. Now, this does get a little bit more advanced. I will go over how to do this a little bit later in the video, so stay tuned for that. In order to get those sweet sign-on bonuses and welcome offers, you're gonna have to spend X amount of dollars to get that bonus. So typically, this is three months but sometimes this can be as high as 12 months depending on the card. But normally it is usually anywhere between three to six months. Now, the easiest way to hit the minimum spend is by paying all of your normal everyday expenses with that credit card. This includes groceries, gas, internet, and cable. Anywhere that card is accepted, use your credit card instead. 
So if you are going out to eat with friends or splitting a trip amongst others, offer to pay with your credit card and have them Venmo you on the spot. This way you can get the rewards on your card. Now I must say that the easiest way to hit the minimum spend is by doing a little bit of planning. If you are planning for a large purchase, try to think about opening up a credit card so you can get the bonus while doing so. If you're planning to buy some new furniture, electronics, or even have to pay a tax bill, put it on your card. Now, what if your everyday expenses are low or not enough for you to hit the minimum spend? I get it. If the minimum spend is $4,000 across three months, this means that you would have to spend roughly around $1,300 a month just to meet it. This is where you have to be a little bit more creative. So for me, the easiest way to hit minimum spends is by paying rent with my credit card. There are some third-party payment processors like Plastique that allows you to pay your landlord with your credit card. Of course, this does come with a small fee, which is roughly around 2.9%, but if you're trying to chase that welcome offer, your welcome offer should bring you way more value than that fee. Another way is by buying gift cards. This is where you have to be a little bit more careful because there are credit card issuers that have been known to turn down accounts if you are manufacturing your spend. But it's gonna be very difficult to tell whether or not you're spending $500 at Trader Joe's buying gift cards rather than food because that charge is still coded as groceries rather than a gift card purchase. So basically what I covered was how to get sign-up bonuses. This is probably the most efficient way of racking up a lot of points in a short period of time because another way of earning points is by actually spending your way there. Most credit cards that offer any sort of rewards or cashback will give you a little bit back per dollar that you spend. So let me give you an example of the American Express Gold Card. Currently with this card, they offer you 60,000 membership reward points after you spend $4,000 within the first three months. So with this card, they offer some pretty great rewards on food and groceries, which is four points per dollar spent. To spend all the way up to 60,000 points, you would essentially have to spend $15,000 on food rather than just $4,000 to get 60,000 points. That's why it's much more time effective to get bonuses. The next key step with travel hacking is to know your goals. So if you just wanna rack up a lot of points and have them for a rainy day, then that's a different specific type of strategy. On the other hand, if you know exactly where you wanna go, how to get there, and where you're gonna stay, this will point you in the right direction of which points and credit cards to get. For instance, I live in SoCal and I'm not too far from LAX. There are plenty of airlines from LAX that I can fly from. Now, if you live in Atlanta, then it would probably make sense to get one of the Delta credit cards. Or if you live in a town where the major airlines are United or American Airlines, then it would make sense to get one of those credit cards or a card that allows you to transfer points to those airlines. There is no one size fit all when it comes down to travel hacking because we all travel differently. If you wanna maximize your points and get as many trips as you possibly can, then traveling economy will get you the most trips. But if you wanna experience the luxury life and travel first class, then you may have to rack up a little bit more points and do a little bit more research to find availability for first class tickets. So with that being said, if you know exactly what your goals are, this would dictate of which credit cards to pick. Now there are quite a few credit card issuers that allow you to transfer the different transfer partners. Some of them include American Express, Chase, City, Capital One, and Built. So this is what I would rank as my top three, which will be Chase, American Express, and Built. Now, depending on who you listen to, they may have a different preference, but this is what I prefer, and I think most people would also agree. Because if you were to get a card from one of these credit card issuers, this will allow you to transfer to some of the best transfer partners. So for me personally, these are my top picks, but once you figure out the details of your trip and where you wanna go, this is where you kinda of have to customize it and tailor it to your specific needs. So let me give you a real life example of a trip from LAX to Cabo San Lucas. So let's plan a trip from October 1st to October 5th. This will be for four nights. Now let's filter this for nonstop flights. Now based on this information, we can fly first class ranging anywhere between 27.5 thousand points all the way up to 35 thousand points. Since Alaska Airlines is a partner with American Airlines, you can book business class tickets through Alaska but for American Airlines. So how this is possible is that there are plenty of airline alliances where it allows you to book flights from one airline for another. This can be way more complex, but for the simplicity of this video, this is pretty much what you need to know. So I have actually flown first class with Alaska Airlines before, and I would say it's a pretty good experience. You get complimentary food and beverages, and it was just a much smoother ride in a comfortable seat. So let's just say that you want to book the cheapest business class flight. In total, this will cost you 55,000 miles plus $152 in fees. Now, if you were to book this exact trip in cash, 
this will cost you $885.77. Since this is months in advance, it will give you time to get that sign-up bonus. Now, let's talk about lodging, since this is usually the next biggest expense. Since we're going to Cabo, we want to relax and try to find a place that's all-inclusive. I personally like to stay at Hyatt Hotels, and there is an all-inclusive resort in Los Cabos called Hyatt Zavida Los Cabos. I think I mentioned it right. So based on the dates of what we picked, for a master king room, each night will cost us 17,000 points. So for four nights, this will cost us a total of 68,000 points. Now, if we were to book this hotel for the cash price, this will cost us $1,736. So now let's break down the strategy that I would implement to get 55,000 Alaska miles and 68,000 Hyatt points. To get 55,000 Alaska miles, we would sign up for the Alaska Airlines Visa credit card from Bank of America. Even though this credit card does have an annual fee of $95, it does come with some additional benefits. This allows you to get a companion fare, which means that whenever you are flying with Alaska Airlines, you can bring a friend, a spouse, whoever you want for an extra $122. But just be aware that this only applies to economy seats. But depending on where you want to fly, this can save you some extra money. You also get free check bags, priority boarding, and you get some extra perks whenever you are flying with Alaska. So with this card, you can get 70,000 bonus miles whenever you spend $3,000 within the first 90 days. So this comes out to be about $1,000 every month for three months. Now let's break down on how I would get 68,000 Hyatt points. My recommendation would be getting a credit card like the Chase Sapphire Preferred. The reason being because this credit card allows you to transfer Chase points to other partners such as Hyatt. So currently at the making of this video, you can earn 60,000 bonus points after you spend $4,000 in purchases within the first three months. So once you hit the minimum spend, you'll be left with 8,000 points that you would need to obtain. But technically, you would only have to earn much less than that. Since you have to spend $4,000, whatever you spend that money on, you would still be actually accruing points. So let's just say that whatever you spend your money on is categorized as other purchases. This is an automatic 4,000 points on the low end. But if you were to spend the whole $4,000 on dining, then this will get you an additional 12,000 points. So this is where there could be some flexibility depending on how you spend your money. But let's just say that you earn one cent per point on that $4,000 minimum spend. This means that you would need to earn another 4,000 points. Now you can spend your way up to get that 4,000 points or you would just want to sign up for another credit card. But if the later is your goal, then I would highly recommend getting another Chase credit card. But if you have the ability to get a Chase business card, this will be much better since this card will not get shown on your personal credit report. And it's come with a much higher sign-up bonus given that you can hit the minimum spend. But if you're not eligible for Chase business cards, then I would recommend one of the Chase Freedom cards since they currently give you a $200 bonus which is equivalent to 20,000 chase points after spending $500 within the first three months. Or you can get the bill card and use it to pay rent. So the rationale behind this is that if you were to get one of the Chase Freedom cards, you can pool your points with the Chase Sapphire Preferred and then transfer it to Hyatt. And on the other hand, with the bill credit card, this is the only other type of points that transfer to Hyatt. So this is why this could be another possible option. Now to transfer your points from one place to another, it's really not all that difficult. All you essentially have to do is make sure that you have an account with the transfer partner. So in this case, you got to make sure that you have an account with Hyatt. Then you would just transfer your chase points or bill points into your Hyatt account. Now let's talk about my next tip about travel hacking, which is staying organized. So depending whether or not you are new to credit cards, this would determine how organized that you would have to be. So for someone like me who have 20 to 30 credit cards, having a spreadsheet or a credit card tracker is extremely useful. But if you are new to the credit card scene and maybe have one or two, then it may not be that difficult. But as you get deeper and deeper into travel hacking and signing up for new credit cards that have annual fees and hitting minimum spending needs, then you have to be much more organized. Now, the free way to do this is by making a spreadsheet via Google Sheets or an Excel spreadsheet whatever you prefer, and just track whenever you open a card and what is the minimum spend and how many points that you have. But there are tools out there that allows you to track your points and rewards, but it does come with a fee. Now, none of these tools that I'm about to share with you are sponsored in this video. This is just something that I use personally to keep track of my points. The first one is card pointers. This will allow you to track all of your credit cards when you open them and any offers that are available to you, and you can track whether or not that you hit the welcome bonus. So this one will cost you $50 a year. So if you are looking a way to track your credit cards and what cards to use when and all the details of your credit cards, then this one may be worth it. The next one that I use is Award Wallet. Now this tool has been around for a long time and this tool allows you to connect all of your reward accounts and keep track 
all of your points and perks in one place. So with this one, this will cost you $30 a year, but what I do like about it is that you can have an overview of what you have on hand with a quick click of a button. But one of the downsides with this tool is that not all award accounts like United or Southwest will be allowed to be tracked using this tool. So some of the stuff you have to manually plug in. Now, this is just how to be organized with your credit cards and your points. But let's not forget the key aspects of credit cards is about making sure that you remember to pay your balances in full and not carry any interest. That's why I highly recommend setting up an auto pay feature, especially when it comes to having multiple credit cards that you have to keep track of. This way you would never miss a payment or have to pay any interest. Now I touched on this a little bit earlier, but to maximize the amount of points that you want to earn so you can use it towards travel is that you got to know which card to use when. So if you are really not sure what credit card to use, you can use an app like Cardpointers, like I mentioned before, which will tell you which credit card to use in which situation. Another little hack that I do with all my credit cards is that I write the perks of each card on the back of the signature strip. Honestly, I don't think anybody signs the card anymore because nobody really ever checks. But for instance, if it is a Chase Freedom Flex, I know that I get 5x points on travel when it's booked through the Chase Travel Portal and 3x dining if I were to use this card. So I can always mark this on the back of the card so I know when to use this card. Another thing to maximize your earning potential is by signing up for offers that are available to you. If you were to sign up for the Chase credit card or an American Express card, they usually give you offers where you can earn X amount back whenever you shop at certain retailers. So for instance, if you were to get some coffee at Starbucks, there may be an offer where you can get 10% cash back up to a certain amount if you were to activate that offer. So it is always good to check offers from time to time to see whether or not you can earn much more points. Another way to earn more points is by using shopping portals such as Rakuten. Now, you've probably heard of this website before. This is just an extension or website. So when you shop through them, you're gonna earn more cash back or earn American Express points. So for example, whenever you have this extension saved on your Google Chrome browser, once you activate it and you shop at, let's say, Adidas, you can earn anywhere between two to 10% cash back on your purchase. Meaning that if you were to spend $100, you can earn 1,000 points or $10 back. I usually like to earn my cash back in points just so I can transfer them to other partners because that way I would have way more value using those points. Now let's move on to my next tip, which is where you want to try to maximize the value of your points and miles as much as possible. Because believe it or not, there are gonna be times where using points does not make sense and booking with cash will be a much better option. So you really have to run the math and know how much your points and miles are worth. So let me give you another example. So let's go to Cabo since we mentioned this before. There's another higher property in Cabo called Serena Del Mar. So for a four night stay from October 1st to October 5th, this will cost $832. This means that each point will be worth 1.22 cents. This will not be a great redemption since Chase points are worth at least 1.25 cents per point if you were to book through the travel portal. Normally with Hyatt, you would want to aim for at least two cents or more. So let me give you another example where it would be worth it. So the hotel that we will be looking at will be called the Cape, a Thompson hotel. So for a standard one king bed with an ocean view, this will cost 21,000 points per night. So for four nights, this will cost 84,000 points. But the cash value would be $2,853.14. If we were to run the numbers, this will give us a value of 3.4 cents per point, which is an excellent deal. This is just one prime example that shows you that not every single point or mile will be valued equally. Your goal is to try to get as much value per point or mile so it would stretch much further. Now, this can be a little bit more time consuming than others would like, but if you would like the simplicity of just being able to meet minimum spends and use a sign on bonus and just use your points however you would like, then you're more than free to do that. Everybody's situation is different, so as long as you're getting somewhat of a deal and some value from using your points and miles, then there's no shame in that. But if you're like me who tries to squeeze every single penny out of each point or mile, it just takes a little bit more time. So far, I bet that you're super excited on travel hacking and trying to figure out how to travel the world for as low as possible. Now the challenge or obstacle that you may run into when you are attempting to travel hack is finding award availability. What this essentially means is that each airline or hotel will have a certain amount of seats or rooms that are bookable through points and miles. This is where most of your time is usually spent but there are tools that you can use to make this process much quicker. So for airlines, there are plenty of them, but the one that I have been using the most is this tool called point.me. This does come in at a fee at $12 a month 
or $129 per year. They also have some extra services where they can book flights using your own points and miles to redeem the best redemption. But either way, this is a pretty good tool to start using and it will save you much more time rather than manually searching for every single flight. Now, the tool that I use to find hotel award availability is aways.com. So with this tool, they will allow you to search a bunch of hotels from a bunch of different major cities all around the world. All you have to do is plug in your dates and which hotels that you are looking for. This can either be from Hilton, Hyatt, IHG, or Marriott. They do have plans of adding more hotel groups to the major platforms, but these are the four major ones anyways. This one allows you to figure out whether or not cash or points is the better option. Another great feature about this tool that I really do like is that depending on your dates, you can search within a 30 day window to figure out whether or not there is availability. Now, with both of these tools, there is no way that they can guarantee 100% that the space is available, whether it is a seat on airline or a room in a hotel, but they are pretty darn close. This will save you way much more time if you were to do it yourself. Another insider tip to make your travel hacking journey much simpler is by subscribing to a deal newsletter to find your deals from your local airport. There are plenty of websites that do this, but the ones that I've personally used before is from Going and Thriftly Traveler Premium. So with both of these companies, there will be an annual cost, but they both have a free option, but the deals that you will see will be limited. For Going, it starts at $49 all the way up to $199 per year, and with Thriftly Traveler, it will cost you up to $69 a year. So for me, I am personally subscribed to the Thrifty Traveler and I think it is a pretty good newsletter. They will send you all different types of deals, including low fares on economy, business class, and flights that you can book with your points. So since this video is all about traveling for as low as possible or free, getting flight deals with points is a must have. So the thing about these subscriptions is that you have to be open with your travel plans. So let's just say that you wanna to travel to Italy, but there's no award availability or there's no deals available at the current time. Instead, you may see an available cheap business flight to Norway or even Japan. So if you have some flexibility in where you want to travel, I believe that these newsletters can be extremely valuable because they have their own flight researchers that can find the greatest deals that are available on a daily basis. If you were to book a flight through any of those paid services, you would save so much more time and money on the flight using points or cash and the subscription would just pay for itself after one trip. You can find all the links and tools that I use or mention in this video down in the description. So hopefully with all the information that I laid out for you, you can start your travel hacking journey right away. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I try to get to as many as possible. For me, I love talking about credit cards and as you can tell from my channel, and if you wanna hang out with me some more and learn more about credit or personal finance, come check out these videos over here.